Hi guys, welcome to M.Art and today I'm going to talk about the materials I use for my Chinese brush painting. So um, the first thing, uh, oh there's lots of things we need really, in no particular order. Um, to start off to work, to work on you need a piece of felt. I'm just going to tilt the camera so you can see my felt. So I've got a piece of felt here, thin piece of felt. So you lay your paper on top and you can work on top. Um, <clears throat> anything else, newspaper or without the felt, because the paper is so thin and it absorbs so much liquid, water, um, it will stick. So you need something and it also helps the brush with a bit of bounce as well. So while we're on paper, <coughs> there's many, many, many different types of paper. Um, the basic paper is sort of made from um, straw and bamboo made into a pulp and um, any size sheets from 4 foot to 6 foot, 12 foot are made and then you can just cut it to the size you want. Um, I use two types of paper. I use a thin paper, a single sheet of Shuan paper and a double. Uh, this one's double, so it's quite thick. The thin one, uh, which I've been using for another video earlier, is uh, quite thin and quite flimsy. Usually once you've done a nice painting you can back your painting by gluing another piece of paper to the back, but we'll talk about that in another video. So the ink we use um, in the old traditional way is to use um, an ink stick. Uh, there are very many types and it's, it's usually sort of pine soot with a, a heavy glue mix. Uh, once this is wet it will stick to anything and if you leave it it's, it really does stick. And I've only got a basic, very basic ink stone. You usually can get them quite bigger than this and with wells and all sorts of things. So the idea is you have a little water droplet. Mine is a miniature teapot. You can see it's miniature by the size of my hand. And the idea is you just pour a drop of water in there and then you grind your ink stink, ink stick rather, sorry about that. And um, there you have your ink. So while this process is happening, you're meant to be thinking about how you're going to lay out your painting, where the strokes are going to go, what colours you're going to use, and virtually where you're going to place things on your painting. So of course, modern day, we can now have ink in a bottle already done for us, and we just pour it out. So that's a brand new one for me, as my old one is uh, getting a bit empty here and it's well used and as you can see there's drips of ink all over it. So the brushes we use, um, they're very different from the western way of brush. Our western brush, uh, let's see I've got one, that's a very small, is that sort of thing, you know. And Chinese brushes are um, much bigger bamboo usually on the holder and um, this is the mountain horse brush and um, this is about five centimeters long the, the hairs and it is mountain horse hair and uh, this is for doing sort of mountains rocks uh, dry brush painting sort of thing very effective for water land grass hills that sort of thing and I'm just cleaning my other brush because I used it and then I have another brush for my sort of general use, bamboo and orchid, and um, this is wolf hair. They don't kill the animals for the fur, by the way, they just take it off them while they're up, they are alive. And, um, and it's quite a useful brush, that one. It's very multi-purpose. And then we have um, smaller brushes. You see my pot mix of pots there. And um, 
usually for leaf veining, thin lines, um, detail, dotting, that sort of thing. Um, for flowers we sort of we have nice goat's hair brush here which is very nice indeed, a nice hand on it, that's got a nice weight to it. And I have a smaller one, a smaller detail, which is quite nice as well. And um, then we have flow brushes, sort of for leaves and stuff. That's my flow brush. So there's many, many different types of brushes. Um, there's a brush called a dragon brush and it's about a hundred pounds, so that's quite big. My art teacher, she's got a massive brush and um, it can be useful for things. So then, you know, if you want to do back washes and stuff, we have a, one of these, it's called a hake brush. They come in different sizes, I have three of them, all different sizes, and they're very good for um, doing background, water, or that sort of thing. Uh, they don't hold much liquid then, so you have to be sort of really think. So once we've done our masterpiece and you want to mark it, I have my own stamp. And this is my um, name here. This comes out as Marding. And it's um, in traditional Chinese. And the, the paste we use is um, cinnabar and um, you just press it into that and then press it onto your paper so that it's, it's quite oily and it sort of lasts forever. And if you see traditional Chinese paintings from hundreds of years ago, you'll see a lot of them have I've got like many, many stabs. That's because as they're sold on to the new owner, the new owner puts his stamp on it. And so when he sells it and somebody else buys it, then they put their stamp on it. So there we go. So I'm just going to adjust the camera. Just bear with me. There we go. There I am. Back again. Oh, no. <laughs> a bit higher. There we go. So that's just a basic intro into um, art materials. Um, I get my art materials from um, Sidewinder uh, Studios. Uh, co.uk and also I use Oriental Supply in America, orientalsupply.com I think they are. Um, I'll put it all down below so you can do that and um, thank you very much. Okay.